Well, I'm Jimmy Carter. I've been a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, served in the Navy for quite a while, 12 years, and then later got into politics and uh, was elected president, governor first, and now I'm uh, running the Carter Center in Atlanta. Well, my father was a uh, first lieutenant in the Army in the First World War, but my uncle, Tom Gordy, was uh, in the Navy when I was growing up. Uh, he was a radio man and served in the Pacific Ocean, and he spent a lot of time in the Western Pacific, in the Philippines and Japan and uh, China, Australia, New Zealand. And he and I formed a, a kind of a pen partnership as soon as I could, was old enough to write a letter. And so I fell in love with the Navy just from far reaching points. And nobody in my family had ever finished high school before I came along. And uh, my daddy wanted me to go to college. And of course, there was only two colleges that were free during the Great Depression, which I was when I grew up. So uh, I wanted to go to Annapolis. And as you said, when I was in the first grade in school, if anybody asked me, what do you want to do when you grow up? I didn't say I want to be an engineer or a fireman or that sort of thing. I said, I want to go to Annapolis and be a naval officer. So that was my ambition throughout my life. You know, I learned from my time at the Naval Academy itself, the discipline, uh, the effort to bring out the best within you and exert it in, in particular, I would say, admirable and beneficial in proper ways. I learned to be prepared to face uh, hardships if necessary with equanimity. Uh, and to, when I was there, there was, the hazing was quite severe and I learned to survive, you know, early morning uh, runs on a, on a commando course before Reveille and, and 98 deep knee bends because my class was class of 47. So I learned all those things at Naval Academy, the discipline, hard work, and, and perseverance in the face of, uh, of uh, challenges. And I think all of those things helped me when I later became involved as a farmer for 17 years and then in, in my political life and now running the Carter Center. And so I, I don't think there's any doubt that my awareness of global affairs when I was studying at the Naval Academy also helped me when I, when I became both governor and president. As long as I did the best I could, I didn't have any feeling of qualms when I was criticized. And um, I've always been willing to take a chance on being criticized if I thought my decision was the right one. So we did a lot of things that were unpopular. When I normalized diplomatic relations with China, it was very unpopular at that time because we had been allied with Taiwan for 30 years before that. Uh, when I negotiated peace between Israel and Egypt, I was criticized by a lot of people because I reached out equally to the Arabs and to the Palestinians along with Israel. So and when I gave away the Panama Canal to the Panamanians, that was the best thing that I did perhaps in the White House. And uh, that was criticized, and is still being criticized. So, you know, if you do the right thing, and you do the best you can, the criticism ought not to bother you much. Well, we still concentrate on two generic issues, peace and human rights. And we interpret human rights in the broadest possible way. Uh, the Carter Center believes that uh, a human right is a home in which to live, food to eat, medical care when you get it, ad adequate education, as well as the right for freedom and to elect your own officials. So the Carter Center works on all those things. We've trained eight million, pe eight million families in Africa how to grow more food grain to feed themselves. My wife and I go every year and build habitat homes for people. Uh, next year we'll be uh, in Nepal, for instance. We've been in Haiti two previous years building homes for people. And, and the Carter Center also takes care of uh, people that have horrible diseases, we treat them. And we, uh, in addition to that, have monitored 98 troubled elections in the world to promote uh, democracy and freedom. So the Carter Center still does the same thing uh, that I learned as, as a Naval Academy midshipman and later in public life. Well, Rose and I started out uh, living in Norfolk, Virginia. I was on an old battleship then, and then later I was on another battleship there. And uh, we learned quite often to give each other plenty of space so she could develop her own talents and abilities without my interfering, and I could do the same thing without her interference. But then we tried to find things that we shared. And uh, 
So we do what we can together, but we give each other space. And we all, and I'm a negotiator. I've, I've been kind of a professional negotiator as president and since then. Uh, and we've learned to communicate with each other even then it's very difficult. So we kind of made a, a rule that we almost always maintain that we resolve our differences before we go to sleep at night. And uh, I'd say give each other space and, and don't uh, let differences of opinion or quarrels about something uh, perpetuate. One of the key things about negotiating a peace agreement is just to get two adversaries to communicate with each other either directly or through a, a mediator. And so if a husband and wife can at least communicate right before they go to sleep at night, I think that's a good uh, way to stay together.